First up is the, uh, the newest Blu-rays I got, and the first one is I Am Legend, and this movie I thought was decent. Um, it, you know, it could have been better, it could have been worse, it was just good. Um, you know, definitely, I was not going to buy this, you know, new, so I got it used. Um, and from what I've read, the, you know, it has some excellent pictures, you know, and some pretty good special effects. So, you know, a decent Blu-ray buy, you know, used for sure. Then we have The Prestige. And I really like this movie. I never had it before. I, uh, I've seen it, you know, I saw it a few times. And this is a, this is a really good movie. Um, I took this uh, test on the internet. It was like a... Uh, get educated on Blu-ray. I took the test and they're supposed to send this to me for free. But that was like four months ago and nothing ever came out of it. It still may get here. I, I have no idea, but for now, I mean, I just, I decided just to buy it. I, I was tired of waiting on it on something that's probably not going to ever come. So, so that's definitely, you know, definitely must on Blu-ray. Then we have The Aviator on Blu-ray. Um, this is a, a really, really good, you know, really good movie, and you know, lots of great special features on the Blu-ray, all ported over from the two-disc edition of the DVD. And again, from what I read, um, I I do have the DVD of this, um, but from what I've read, the uh, the Blu-ray picture is really, really good. And this is probably one of my favorite mu you know movies over the past few few years. So I I just had to get it on Blu-ray. Then we have Casino Royale, another movie I have on DVD, but, you know, I took a look at the, uh, with my computer that, that has a Blu-ray player on it, it came with a Blu-ray disc that showed you, like, DVD to Blu-ray comparisons, and the Casino Royale had a few of those comparisons on it, and I saw, I saw the DVD and I saw the Blu-ray, I was like, well, I, you know, I, I can't go, I can't stick with the DVD, I, I just gotta get the Blu-ray of this, because it looked really much nicer on Blu-ray. And so, got that. And I, I got all these Blu-rays at the same time. And then I got a uh, Swordfish. This is, I had this on DVD, and then I got this on HD DVD, and then I realized, you know, HD DVD, you know, HD DVD is going down the drain, so I wanted to get this on Blu-ray. So I sold my HD DVD copy of this, and then got the Blu-ray. And this is, I really love this movie. And then the last Blu-ray I got was Mr. Brooks. And this is another one. I saw this, like, when it first came out. I rented it, and saw it, and liked it. And then ever since then, I, you know, really wanted to get it. But it is always like $35 at the store, and I couldn't find it used anywhere. And online, it's still like $25 used. So I finally found it for a decent price used. And I really, really like this movie a lot. It's a lot better than I thought it would be. And as a side note, um, I did buy Ratatouille on Blu-ray. I watched it, and I didn't... It was good, but I didn't... I wouldn't watch it again. So I was like, well... There's, there's really no sense in me keeping the Blu-ray if I'm not really, really not going to watch it again because I, I didn't think it was great. So I returned it and got I Am Legend instead. So that was a good trade. Then for the DVDs, I got Who is Cletus Tout? And this is not, for some reason, and this is one of those movies that you really can't find at stores. It has a good cast and everything, but it's just not really you know widely made. And you know I found this used for like... Three dollars or four dollars, and it's it's a good movie. I was actually surprised. I really liked it. So, you know, it's a it's a quirky comedy type. You know, it's kind of suspense on most movies. It's it's very different. Good. Then I got um, Bad Moon. For a uh, you now, werewolf movies are hard to come by, and lots of times when you do come across a werewolf movie. Usually it's PG-13, or maybe the werewolf isn't in it too much, and it's just, you know, you know, bad. I mean, or, I mean, lots of the werewolf movies were made, you know, a while ago, and, you know, those, they're, they're poor movies. But this one's a pretty decent one. I mean, this came out, like, in 1996, and it has, a, has Dennis the Menace in it, and 
you know, for for being a werewolf movie, the the graphics are pretty good. I mean, it, it doesn't look too fake, and you know, it's rated R, and so it's it's actually a werewolf movie for adults, not kids. And that's what you know. I always thought, I always think it's stupid when you release a werewolf movie that's obviously about that that should be gory, but you, you make it PG thirteen. I don't like that. So this is. There's very few, you know, good werewolf movies, and this is probably one of the better ones, just because it's rated R. And then, a uh, giallo I got is Naked You Die. And this came out in the late 60s, and it's not as, it's not as uh, gory or, I mean, there's some light nudity in this, kind of from like the side. So it's, it's not a very strong R-rated giallo. I mean, this is this is unrated, but I mean, if this was released today, it would probably be PG, you know, PG-13. But it's still, I mean, the storyline and the acting and the entire movie is good. It's it's a good watch, and uh, you know, it keeps you, you know, if you if you pay attention, it keeps you guessing till the end. So, you know, for eight dollars or whatever, it's, it's a good, it's a good giallo. Then we have a uh, another movie. Uh, Zoolander. Uh, this is a decent movie. Um, there's lots of good special features on here, and for three dollars, I think it was. I mean, it, it's worth three dollars. Probably not, you know, worth much more unless you really, really find it entertaining. But I mean, it's just one of those movies that's that's all right. Not great, but not bad. Like some of the, some other movies like this could be. Then. Um, now, last week I bought David Lynch's Blue Velvet, and I watched that, and I really liked it. So, pretty much after I watched that, I started looking at other David Lynch movies and decided to, to buy one, and I got Inland Empire. And this is the two-disc limited edition, and this is an, I mean, another, of course, it's David Lynch, so it's another weird movie, and it's like three hours long, but... It's you know pretty much on par with you know the rest of his movies. Not not as great as Mulholland Drive or Eraserhead, but it's still really good and you know, definite you definite watch if you ever come across it. And then the last movie I got was the number twenty three, and I saw this in theaters and really liked it. I knew critics didn't like it as much as I thought they should, but I mean this is the standard DVD. I was over the past six months or so, I was, I was hoping to see you know, it come out on Blu-ray, but I think it has some, something to do with the Infinity film that it's not going to be released in Blu-ray or something. But maybe on down the road it will be. But for now, the, the DVD, I, I was tired of waiting, so I got the DVD. And this is a this is a really good movie. I like these types of movies where, you know, it's pretty... I mean, throughout this movie, they, they change everything into some, somehow being... Yeah, you know, part of the number twenty-three, and even though it's far-fetched, I, I still like when things are far-fetched because it's just it, it makes things interesting. And I really like Jim Carrey when he does these types of roles like this and like Eternal Sunshine of the Spotless Mind. I like these more serious roles he, he does. I mean, I, I do like the comedy roles a lot, but I also like these roles he does. And this is a very good movie. So that's it for the for this week. Um, didn't get, you know, a whole bunch, I mean, but, you know, I got enough to, you know, to add to the collection and, you know, just, some, you know, some good movies, so, you know, let me know if, uh, you know, what you think of these movies and if you have any you know, suggestions.